In this lecture, we'll be studying about top level and low level constant. So in the previous lectures, we have been studying about the constant qualifier. We have seen references to const and we have also seen pointers to const. So we have seen how constant work with each of these things. Now in this lecture, we will see what do we mean by top level and low level const, what are their differences and what is their significance. Okay, so let's get started. So talking about top level and low level constants, a pointer is an object that can point to a different object. So we have already seen this when we studied about pointers. So pointer is an object by itself and it can point to a different object. So we can talk independently about whether a pointer is a constant and whether the objects to which it can point are constants. So we have studied this when we studied about pointers and constants. So if you have not watched the previous lecture, I strongly recommend that you watch it first before you continue with this lecture because most of the things that we are discussing here are based on what we studied in the previous lecture. Okay, so in the previous lecture we have seen that a pointer can be a constant itself and also the object to which the pointer can point, that also can be constants. So we can talk about these two things independently in case of pointers. Okay, so in this regard, top level constants indicate that the pointer itself is a constant. So this is the most important thing. When we are talking about top level constants, we are talking about the pointer being a constant itself. So the const keywords that are used for specifying that a pointer is a constant by itself, those constants are known as top level constants. And then low level constants are when a pointer can point to a constant object, we refer to that constant as a low level constant. So talking in terms of pointers, we already said that pointers can be constants themselves. So those are known as top level constants. And we have also seen that pointers can point to other objects which can be constants. So those constants, that is the object to which the pointer points, if those objects are also constants, then those are referred to as low level constants in terms of pointers. Okay, so let's go deeper and see what are the other differences between top level and low level constants. So talking about top level constants, they indicate that the object itself is a constant. Like we said in the case of pointers, when the pointer itself is a constant, then those constants are known as top level constants. So similarly, if it is indicating that an object itself is a constant, not only pointers, then they are known as top level constants. So top level constants can appear in any object type that is one of the built-in arithmetic types, a class type or a pointer type. So what we have been discussing so far was about pointers, but top level constants can appear not only in pointers, but it can appear in any object type, like any of the built-in arithmetic types, a class type or a pointer type like we have already discussed. Okay, now talking about low level constants, low level constants appear in the base type of a compound types, such as pointers or references. So low level is going to appear in the base type of compound types. Like for example, when we discuss about the pointers, we said that pointers can point to objects which are constants. So the base type of the compound type, that is telling us to what kind of objects that pointer is pointing. So those kind of constants, they are known as low level constants. So they can be there in case of pointers as well as references. So in case of references, they are always low level that we will see when we move ahead. So note that pointer types, unlike most other types, can have both top level and low level constants independently. Now, why do I say this? That is because we have already said that when a pointer is a constant by itself, that is a top level constant. Also, in the same definition, it will tell us where the pointer can point to. What are the objects to which the pointer can point to? Now, if those objects to which the pointer can point to are also constants, then that constant is a low level constant. So we see that in the same definition, we can have both top level and low level constants independently in case of pointers. So it will become clearer when we take examples. So let us take some examples. So coming to the examples, here I am defining a simple variable called i of the type integer and I'm initializing it to zero. So this is a simple declaration. Okay, next. So here I am declaring or defining a pointer called p1 and here it is written asterisk const. 
Now what does this mean? We have studied in the previous lecture that whenever the const keyword is appearing just after the asterisk, it shows that the pointer itself is a constant. So p1 is a constant pointer. And then what are the type of objects it can point to? It can point to integer type objects. So we are initializing it to ampersand i that means the address of i. Now what is i? i is an integer. So we are storing the address of this i into this pointer p1. So p1 is a constant pointer which cannot be changed and it can store the address of integer type objects and we are storing the address of i which is an integer type object. Okay, so we can't change the value of p1 and the const that we see here is top level. So we see that this const it is specifying that p1 is a constant type object specifically a constant type pointer. So this constant that we see here, this is a top level constant. Okay, next. So here I am declaring another integer called ci. It is an integer and it is also a constant and we are initializing it to 42. So here again we cannot change this ci because ci is a constant integer. And this const is specifying that this ci which is of the type integer is a constant. So again this const that we have here is a top level constant. Okay, now next, here we see that we are having another pointer called p2 and then we see that the asterisk is over here. There is no const just before this p2. So this signifies that p2 is not a constant pointer, but it can point to constant integer types. So the object to which p2 points can be constant integers, but p2 itself is not a constant pointer. And then we are initializing it with the address of ci. Now what is ci? We see that ci is a constant integer. So constant integer types address is stored here in p2. So here we see that this const is not specifying that p2 is a constant. Instead it is telling us that the object to which p2 points is a constant. So here we can change p2. Since p2 is not a constant itself, we can make p2 point to some other address later on. So we can change p2 and the constant is low level. So unlike the other two cases that we have seen before, here this const that appears is a low level const because it is not specifying that p2 itself is a constant. It is just specifying that the object to which p2 points is a constant. Hence this is a low level constant. Okay, now coming to the next one. Here we are having two const here, const and const. So let's see, it says here const int then asterisk const p3 equal to p2. Okay, now let's go from right to left again to understand this declaration. So we are essentially defining a pointer called p3 and this asterisk const is telling us that this p3 is a constant itself. And then what are the objects to which p3 can point? p3 can point to constant integer type objects. Okay, and we are initializing it to p2. Now what is p2? We see this is p2. p2 is having the address of ci. Now what is ci? ci is a constant integer. Yes, it is pointing to constant integer type object p2. Okay, so the important thing is that we see two constants here, one and two. So the rightmost constant is top level, the leftmost is not. So why do we say this? Let's see. This constant is specifying that p3 is a constant itself. Okay, so this is a top level constant like we have discussed. Whereas this constant here, this is telling us that p3 can point to constant integers. So this is a low level constant. So this is what we have said earlier. In case of pointers, we can have top level and low level constants independently in the same definitions like this. Okay, now in the next one, here we have const int ampersand r equal to ci. Now what is this? So here we see this is a reference. I am defining a reference to const. So it is a const integer and it is a reference and we are trying to store ci into it. Now where is ci? ci is a const integer so it is fine. But this is a reference and as we said const in reference types is always low level. So keep in mind that whenever you see a constant appearing for a reference type then it will always be low level. So only in case of pointers we can independently have top level and low level and pointers can also have top level, even other types can have top levels but in case of references the constants are always low level. Okay, so with these examples I hope you have understood what is the difference between top level and low level constants. 
So we have understood the differences, we have understood what they mean. But the question is, what is the significance of this? Why are we studying top level and low level constants? Where is it important to know about top level and low level constants? So let's find the answer to that. So the significance of knowing top level and low level constants is while copying objects. So the distinction between top level and low level matters when we copy an object. That means when we are copying one object to another object, so at that time, the top level and low level constants are going to matter. So we will see how. When we copy an object, top level constants are ignored. So this is an important thing to keep in mind. So whenever we are copying objects, if there is a top level constant involved in that, top level constants will always be ignored. But on the other hand, low level const is never ignored. So keep in mind that we ignore top level constants, but low level constants cannot be ignored and they will not be ignored and they will tell us whether we are able to copy one object to another. So when we copy an object, both objects must have the same low level constant qualification or there must be a conversion between the types of the two objects. So we will be able to copy one object to another only when both the objects will have the same low level constant qualification. That means they should have the same type of low level constants or there should be a conversion that happens in order to match the types. So we will see that when we take the examples. So in general, we can say that we can convert a non-constant to constant, but not the other way around. So we can convert a non-constant to constant, but we cannot convert a constant to a non-constant. Okay, so let's take some examples to make this clearer. Okay, so coming to these examples, I am taking these same definitions that we have discussed in the previous slides. So these were the definitions that we have seen in order to understand top level and low level constants. So these same things are going to be used again. So that is why I am displaying it on the top here. Okay, so if you remember in these definitions, which were the top level constants? So these were the top level constants that we said. So here this one, this one and this one. These were the top level constants and all the other constants that we had, they were low level constants. Okay, so let's keep this in mind and see the examples. Okay, so here we are talking about copying and here I am copying CI to I. So I equal to CI. Okay, now let's see what happens here. Where is I? This is I. What is I? I is a variable of the type integer. So I is a simple integer. And what is CI? Where is the definition of CI? Here is a definition of CI. CI is an integer and also it is a constant. So it is a constant integer and it is having the value 42. Okay, so if you look at these two definitions, they are different. This is a simple integer, but this is a constant integer. So will we be able to copy CI to I? The answer is yes. Why? Because top level const in CI is ignored. So we said that whenever we have top level constants, they will be ignored. So this is a top level constant and it will get ignored. So it will just look like int ci equal to 42 and here int i equal to 0. So now we see that they are matching in terms of their types. So this copy is valid and it can be done. All right. So next p2 equal to p3. Now where is p2? This is p2. What is p2? p2 is a pointer and it is a simple pointer, not a constant pointer, but it can point to constant integer objects. Okay. And what is P3? This is P3. So in definition of P3, we see that P3 is a constant pointer and it also points to constant integer objects. So will we be able to copy P3 to P2? So let's see, if you look at these two, they again look different because P2 is a normal pointer, whereas P3 is a constant pointer. But again, top level constant. This is a top level constant and hence while copying this will get ignored. So it will look like const int p3 and here also it is const int p2. So now we see they are matching again. So the pointer to type matches top level constant p3 is ignored. So we see that when we ignore this and we also see that the pointer to types that is const int here and const int here they are matching. So this copy is also valid. Now next, here I am defining a new pointer called P and it is of the type integer. So this is a simple or an ordinary pointer, not a constant. And here we have P3. 
So I am trying to copy P3 to this P. Now where is P3? This is P3. And P3 it is having a top level constant and also a low level constant. So will we be able to copy P3 to P? We won't be able to copy. Why? Because the top level constant can be ignored. But still we are having another constant over here which is a low level constant which cannot be ignored. So there is a mismatch in the type here. P3 will be a pointer pointing to constant integers. But P is a pointer that can point only to simple integer and not to constant integer. So P3 has a low level constant but P does not. P3 is having a low level constant here. But this P does not have. So here in this case the copying cannot be done. Okay next. So here I am saying P2 equal to ampersand I. That means in P2 I am trying to store the address of I. Now what is P2? Let's see. P2 is this one. P2 is a pointer. It's a simple pointer. And what does it point to? It is pointing to constant integers. And what am I trying to make it point to? I am trying to make it point to ampersand I. Which is a simple integer. So I is a simple integer. And P2 is supposed to point to constant integer. So will I be able to make this happen? Yes, it will happen. Why? Because we can convert the simple integer to constant integer. So converting a simple integer to constant integer is possible. So this integer here will be converted to a constant integer and that address of i will be copied to P2. So this is possible. So we said that either the low level constant qualifications should match. Otherwise, there should be some conversions that can take place in order to make it match. So in this case, it was not matching, but we could do a conversion to make it match. So this is also valid. Now next, here I am defining a reference called R. So ampersand R is a reference and it is not a reference to constant. It is a simple reference and I am trying to bind it to CI. Now where is CI? Here is CI. So CI is actually an integer type constant. So CI is an integer constant. Now, if you remember when we studied about reference to constants, we already said that we cannot bind an ordinary integer to a constant integer object. So this is a constant integer object, but in case of reference, we cannot bind a constant integer object to a simple reference like this. Now you may have the doubt that this is a top level constant. So why don't we just ignore this? But it cannot be ignored here because here we are talking about reference and not pointers. So in case of pointers, we usually ignore it. But in case of reference here, we cannot ignore it like that. Okay, so we see that this is not possible. But the vice versa will be possible. How? Let's see. So here I am having another reference called R2. And this is a reference to a constant integer. Okay. And we are trying to bind it to I, which is a simple integer. So we can bind reference to constant integers to plain integers. So this is possible. But this is not possible. We cannot bind ordinary references to constant objects. But we can bind constant references to ordinary objects like this. So this is also something that we have already seen while we studied about references to constants. Okay, so we see that the main thing that we have to remember is when we deal with pointers. So when we deal with pointers, we have top level constants and we have low level constants. We can have them separately and we can even have them together. Like we have seen in this example over here, we are having both top level and low level in the same definition. So while copying objects, we have to be sure about which are the ones that are going to get ignored. Mostly it is the top level constants. And then we have to see if the low level constant qualifications match and only if they match or only if a conversion can take place to make them match, then the copying can take place. Okay, so with that, I hope you have understood what are top level constants and low level constants, how they differ from each other, how we can identify and tell them apart. And we have also seen how they work while copying objects. So I hope this lecture is clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.